Ah, Mrs. Bush, I'm amazed by your ability to make this stunning entrance at such short notice. Well, it was nothing. I just shoved the dinner to the back of the stove and took a bath. <laughs> You're just in time. Hi, chum. He means just in time for nothing. Oh, yes, and this is Chris, last name mercifully forgotten. He owns everything as far as the eye can see here. How do you do, Mrs. Bush? Chris, is it okay to start? Sure, any time. Remember, this is better in front of an audience. Oh, yeah, I understand. Uh, toolbar introduction. I'm in the mood for love. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's the matter, Matt? Do something with that, will you? Don't just sing a number. Make a scene of it. Take advantage of the fact that you're in a nightclub. Use it as you would a set. The critics would say you have a masterpiece of realism here if you could put this on a stage. You've got dozens of props around you. Busboys, waiters, drunks, customers. Put them in the act. They'll love it. Your number starts up there. The whole place is dark. You pick her up with an overhead spot. But, Mr. Saxon, we haven't got a spot up there. We can't pick Well, her. rig one so that you can. Forget the beat and follow her. No, 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 no. Don't stand there like a sculptor's nightmare. Here, your number starts here at the bar. This thing got a verse? Oh, Matt, no one sings verses anymore. That's old-fashioned. Nothing that is good and has a purpose is old-fashioned. I'll settle for 50% of the verse. First eight bars. Lovely interlude, most romantic mood. Sing it to the man and next to you. your attitude is right, dear. Now the other side. Sweetheart, you have me under spell. I'm in the mood for love. Now to both of them. Simply because you're near. What do you think you're doing? Singing to a customer. No, 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 no. You're too far down into the number to do that. From now on, sing it to everybody. From Come the on. bridge? Yes, from the bridge. Uh, why stop to think of weather? Yeah. Why stop to think of weather? This little dream might Find the first play. empty chair. We'll put our No, 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 no. Take it with you. Take it with you. No. Sit down. If there's a cloud above, if it should rain, we'll let it go for tonight. Forget it. I'm in the mood for I'm not worried, Mr. Saxon. She's okay. She's better than that. Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering if you could stay over for the first floor show tonight. I've got an Adagio team and a chorus that could stand some improvement. Well, roughly speaking, my time is worth about $5,000 an hour. <laughs> I'll settle for this ringside table and dinner for all of us. It's a deal. Shall I show my rhythm routine next, Matt? No, no. Save your feet. You're open tomorrow night. Just like that? I love your act, Elma. What I saw of it. Thank you, Janet. Have anything special in mind for dinner, Mr. Saxon? The best steak in the house for Mrs. Bush. I'll leave the rest of it up to you. But remember, the quality of my criticism is in direct proportion to the quality of your food. <laughs> don't worry, I know a bargain. Excuse me, please. Thank you, Matt. I don't think I could have made it alone. Uh, did I tell you, Eric, I liked your new opening scene? No, no, you didn't. Well, it gives us a good, solid premise. Also, it points up clearly the need for another scene later on. Not a rewrite, but a completely new scene. What kind of a scene? Uh, one that gets the backstage flavor of show business into the script. Have you any ideas? Well, you might use the Michael Barone incident right out of Moliere's biography. That's perfect. I wonder why I didn't think of that. I don't know what you're talking about, but I'll bet you did think of it. Careful around her, Matt. 
She's from St. Louis, too. <laughs> Lovely city. That would eliminate the need for the little off-stage scene in the third act. Yes, I have some suggestions about that, too. Also, some revisions that will be necessary later on. Now, about the opening scene of your second act. Mm, this air feels good. I'm glad we're walking home. I should have written down those changes he suggested. I'll forget half of them. Darling, I know it's late, but I don't feel a bit sleepy. Let's sit down for a little bit. Sure. Tell me, do you agree with all of his ideas? Almost have to. He knows so much more about the theater than I do. He did do a lot for Alma tonight. And he seems like a different man. You know something? What? She's up to her ears in love with him. How do you know? Well, she told me so in the powder room. She also told me he's been married. To some girl who's been eating her heart out ever since they broke up. He doesn't look like a man who's ever been married. You mean he doesn't look like a man who would stay married, even for money. Alma tells me Saxon's ex-wife is really rich. Darling. Hmm? I was just thinking how lucky I am to be married to Eric Bush. Maybe it's a foolish thing for a wife to say, but... I think you're perfect just the way you are. Just the way you are. You sound like a bride. Hmm? Don't let anything change you, Eric. Please don't. You can turn the light on, dear. I didn't want to disturb you. Did you like what you wrote today? No. No. But I... I think I understand what he wants now. Is it what you want? How would I know? I'm sorry, dear. But I'm so completely confused, I can't tell good from bad anymore. All I can do is keep rewriting until he's satisfied. I've never seen you this tired. No wonder you don't know what you're writing. Oh, at least I'm on the third act now and can't last much longer. Eric, hmm? I know something as sure as I know my own name. Nothing you're going to write from now on is going to be any good. Unless you can get away from New York and nightclubs for a while. He likes to discuss each scene as I write it. Well, let him discuss them all at once. Just think how much clearer your mind would be. How much better you could write. If we could spend the next week at our home on the island. I'd love it. I'd love it. It just can't be done. Who says it can't be done? Listen, if Eric Bush wants to take his wife for a walk in the woods and fill his lungs with fresh air for a change and sleep through a long, cool night so he can write and really know what he's writing about, who's going to stop him? We'll leave tomorrow. I'll call Saxon's secretary first thing in the morning and tell her we're leaving for the island. I'm sorry there's no telephone and Saxon will have his last act when I get back. And I won't call till the last minute till just before we get on the plane. Now you're making sense. And as for you, Mrs. Bush, it'll be nice knowing you again. The same to you, stranger. <laughs> Vinny, 
next curtain, the end. Wonderful. You know, I feel good for the first time since I finished that first draft and thought I had a play. <laughs> You'll feel even better after you've relaxed for a few days. How much longer can we stay on the island? I'll mail him the third act. It should be at least a week till he gets the message back to me. Oh. Anyway, he's busy on the other play. One whole week. Our second honeymoon. <laughs> What's the matter? That yacht, whose is it? I don't know. Ahoy there, Eric Bush! Eric Bush! Ahoy! Matt Sachs. Oh, no! Eric Bush, ahoy! Hi, Matt! What a boat. I didn't know he had one. Let's swim over. They're stopping. Like fish. Master aboard the rotten egg.